football Friday. We got basketball to talk about. And on top of it all, my brother Tim Tebow is wearing one of the jackets that I wore a few weeks ago. Oh, right in my style. But we'll let that go. You hey, know hey, the why? only difference, Stephen A., is it's what? about three sizes bigger, okay? That is true. <laughs> that is true. But here's where I got you. Where are you at this weekend, Tim Tebow? Alabama. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. There we go. First takes in the house. Ha ha. Let's roll. Let's go. We got to come out on Sundays and earn it again and turn the page to the Chiefs. Let's go. The whole team kind of got that swag back. Now, how can we keep that swag going? I be going super hard. I've been working. I got my swag up back. Oh. Really my job. Touchdown. Tyreek Hill. We know what we're capable of. All of these stuff go through my head. Will I lose or will I win? Prescott lands in the corner. Good morning and welcome into First Take on this Feel Good Friday. Hello, Tim Tebow, Stephen A. Smith. I'm Molly Karam Rose. And gentlemen, I just want to say quickly, we are going to get to the Patriots. All the good NBA, Perk and Jay Williams will be here. But we are going to start with a potential... Oh, he what? Looks, it, the background looks beautiful. I mean, yeah, it's it just beautiful. looks beautiful there. You yeah. know, Do you notice look, also there's always a crowd around Tim, too. Like, right. they'll there's start gathering and then there's going to be... But not today. That, no, they're not they'll there be coming. Today. They'll not be coming. Today. It's just too early. You, no, no. You, you know, you know why there's no crowd around Stephen A. right now? It's because um, he always stays isolated because he's just too popular and he's got to stey inside, you know? No, no, I'm a man of the people. Very I'm rarely go out, you know? See, it's just too I hard there, for you. You get bothered too much. and it, That's yeah. true. You know? But if yeah. I that's was there. That's why I couldn't even believe when you said you flew commercial. I was blown away. Oh, please, please. If I were there, yeah. Tim, if I was there, there would be a crowd around me. You know why? Because he's in <laughs> Alabama. They know better than to be around Tim Tebow down there. They know he ain't well, down for them. I check. He Tim's, ain't down for Tim's, them. Tim's got a fan or two. That's he's right. just being he, humble. He's got a fan. He's All not right. in Alabama. Let's do this, guys. Uh, that potential Super Bowl matchup I was just talking about for your viewing pleasure doesn't get much more exciting than America's team facing the Chiefs. Dak Prescott versus Patrick Mahomes, the top two teams in their respective divisions, cannot wait for this one. Either can Dak. Dak, is this game a measuring stick for you? It's not a measuring stick for myself. I mean, I think for this team, going into a hostile environment, as you said, playing against a great quarterback, a good offense, a uh, great team. I mean, a team that was um, – has been been the team of the last two years or last few years, I'd say, and just uh, knowing how explosive they are, the the, the star power they have. Um, as I said, going into their environment, it's it's a great challenge for us as a team. You know, Stephen A., you look very handsome in your navy, and I know what's missing now. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. That hat, it's perfect. Cowboys with the white trim. Mm, it well it does look never. sweet. <laughs> It will complete Never. the look. Never. Yes. Uh, Let's go. It would look right. great on you, Stephen A. That with the gator tie, and then it's perfect. <laughs> yes. Now we're talking. See, Tim and I see eye to eye. Welcome right. to the party. Uh, who's the better team right now, Stephen A.? Chiefs or Cowboys? Unfortunately, it's the Cowboys, Tim Tebow. It's the Cowboys right now. I mean, Did that, that hurt? It, it hurt. Did that hurt? It hurt. Like, it hurt. It hurt well, bad. for me. That's it warmed it. up but, my but, spirit. But, but I will confess this. It's just for now. I mean, when it really, really counts, that ain't going to be the case. But for now, the Dallas Cowboys clearly are the better team. Dak Prescott is playing better than Patrick Mahomes this year. Obviously, their running game with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard is far more effective than the Kansas City Chiefs, who are devoid of much of a running game. Even though Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, I believe in those brothers, we've seen what Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb have been doing all season long. Guys like Wilson and Schultz have stepped up on the defensive side without the likes of Demarcus Lawrence or Randy Gregory. You still had, uh, you know, Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs and those boys stepping up. You look at the Dallas Cowboys, and I don't think there's any question that when you compare them with the Kansas City Chiefs and how sporadic the Kansas City Chiefs were, I definitely don't believe you can give the Kansas City Chiefs the edge. I definitely don't think you can look at them as the better team thus far in the 2021 season. But, but Stephen A., that's not the question. The question is not who's been most consistent. It's not who's been more sporadic. It's right now. right now. And if you look at the way the Kansas City Chiefs played the other night, that is a team that could beat anybody in the NFL. They got too much firepower. Patrick Mahomes got his swagger back. Obviously, we heard Kelsey got his swagger back. The defense played a lot better. That team can beat anybody. And if that team shows up, I think most analysts are going to pick that team to win. I really do. 
Tim, Tim Tebow, that makes no sense. Let, let, how let, does that let, make no let, sense? Let, let me tell you how. First of all, don't give me some swagger. Let's look at the Kansas City Chiefs, okay? They've won three straight. You beat the Giants, that don't count. That's damn near bottom. Oh, we're getting Saquon that, Barkley that, that, back. That, yeah, but he ain't Buckle back yet. But, he, but he's not, he wasn't there three weeks ago when you played them, okay? So, so you're going against the New York Giants, which is practically a, bad, a bye week. Then after that, you go against the Green Bay Packers without, without – Aaron Rodgers, and then this past week, you go against a Las Vegas Raiders squad. Do we have to? We don't even need to regurgitate what they've been hold, through hold from on. John were, Gruden. Were the Raiders the not a good team all year? Have the Raiders not been a good team? No, no, I'm saying over the last three weeks because of all that they've gone through, all the turmoil. Oh, so wait, the you're looking at the last three weeks. What happened two weeks ago with Dallas? Oh, so if the last three weeks we don't we don't look at that one? Well, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm just saying the Broncos. That was, that was, uh, they, they laid was an egg. Ta-ta. They laid uh, an egg, ta-ta. which made me very. They, let me, yeah. they laid an egg, which made me very, very happy. So, I mean, I'm not upset about it. So we look at the last it. three weeks. Don't look at one team. Look at both teams. Well, I'm looking at both teams, and I'm saying outside of that, what did the Dallas Cowboys do since open the night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? They've been winning every game. It's the only game they've lost they have. in eight yes. weeks. I agree. And they're a really good team. But when you look at last week, the way the Kansas City Chiefs played, if they consistently play like that and they stay healthy, that is a team that can beat anybody. They have too much firepower. They have a great offensive mind in Andy Reid. The defense looked much improved. And Patrick stopped forcing it, and he just started taking what the defense giving him. I know that's cliche, but he did it. It opened up everything, and that is a dynamic football team. And by the way, he threw for 405 tutties. That's ridiculous, Stephen, eh? He can well, do that against anybody if he takes what they, what they well, give him. Well, who's not answering the question now? The question is, which is the better team right, right now? now? And right now, the Dallas Cowboys literally have looked better than the Kansas City Chiefs. You're going to tell me that you're going to hang your hat on what the Chiefs did against that Raiders squad? I mean, just stop Are the Are you going to hang your hat on what the Cowboys did against the Broncos? Well, no, I'm not. I mean, they got annihilated. We all know better than that. I mean, I mean, I mean, we know that the Broncos are not that good. That's why we know that it was a fraudulent loss for the Dallas mm. Cowboys, and we accept that it is what it is. But by and large, when you look at the Cowboys throughout the season, they have been better than the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, can the Kansas City Chiefs turn it that on? That is They've true. They've been better. Through, throughout the season, they have been better. They have been more consistent. They have played at a higher level. I wasn't answering that question. I was answering the question Molly asked. Right now. Right now. Right now. This weekend in Kansas City, I think the Chiefs win. Listen. Hey, you can say that. I think the Cowboys are going to win, believe it or not. I really, really do think that they're going to win this game. What but, type of win? Big win? No, it's going, be a, win? it's going to be a close game, but they, I think they'll find a way to pull it out. Listen, the Cowboys might not lose another game until the playoffs. I mean, they're Ooh. going down to the playoffs. The second Ooh. the playoffs come, they're how going home. How does this I, all make you I look feel? At the, I look at their schedule. I could, see, I could see possibly one or two more losses, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they ran the table for the rest of the regular season because I think they got a cupcake schedule. Okay. Well, I think, in all honesty, the Cowboys are also really, really good. We're not comparing them to an average team. We're comparing two very elite teams, and I think it's important to make that known. Is both of these teams have a chance to win the championship. I just think that it's, it's clearly the producers and you that have collaborated with one another because I got to start off the show basically saying something nice about the Cowboys, and I don't know if anything that makes me sicker than that, but that's what I, I have to do. You're, you're wearing it's their colors. You're, you're supporting the team. We're it's getting you the hat. Colors. These are not it just all works, Stephen. It's not, it's it all not works. Colors. Exactly. These are not the colors. These Tim, are. let me ask you this. Who is the team to be in the AFC? Do you think it's the Kansas City Chiefs? I do if they keep playing like they did last week. I I just think with that firepower, with what they've done in the past, their ability to turn it on and be great. Because, listen, it's not about what you do all year. If you make it to the playoffs and and you're playing Kansas City, oh, boy, nobody's going to want to do that. You're going to want to play a lot of the other teams that have been more consistent all year because you do not want to face this team when they're playing that way. They have too much firepower. They can score at will like that so fast. I, I just don't think anybody wants to play them when they're playing at that level. I don't know how much Kansas City wants New England because if anybody has Patrick Mahomes' number potentially, it could be Bill Belichick. Let's go there right now, Stephen A. Good segue. The Patriots held the Atlanta Falcons to zero points last night while dropping 25. This defense is top two in the league. Mac Jones threw for 226 yards, one TD, one interception. New England has now won five in a row. Stephen A., can the Patriots win because of Mac Jones? No. I like Mac Jones. No. No. I thought Stop you were Mr. It. Alabama. Listen, listen, I am Mr. Alabama. I love Mac Jones, okay? I'm just saying he's a rookie. 
All right, he's a product of the system that he's playing in. He limits mistakes. He knows where to go with the football. Mm -hmm. He's got talent. I'm not taking anything away from him. But it's about that defense. It's about how opportunistic that defense is. That's what really has the Patriots where the Patriots are right now. The veterans that stayed home last year due to COVID came back this year. Van Noy ain't in Miami any longer. He's back in New England. You look at Jackson. You look at McCourty and these brothers. Their defense is big time. Yeah, it's top a top two, in the two defense yeah. in the National Football League. And because their defense is so special and elite, that's the difference. I give Mac Jones all the credit in the world. Love him coming out of Alabama. I think he's going to be a star. But this season... He, he's not going to be the reason you win if you're New England. Go because of that defense and that running game. That's what it is. That's not the question. Is Can the Patriots win because of Mac Jones? And yes, they can. It, we're, a lot of your points, right? Yes, the defense is great. They are top two. They're creating a lot of turnovers. But in this five-game winning streak, Mac Jones has been top ten in the NFL. Mac Jones is doing a really good job. And there wouldn't be another top 10 quarterback that you'd say their team doesn't win because of him. In the last five weeks, he's top 10 in completion percentage, yards per attempt, TD passes, and passer rating. Yes, they can win because of Mac Jones. He doesn't make mistakes. He takes what the defense gives him. He's incredibly smart, incredibly accurate, and he doesn't hurt their team. Yes, you can win because of Mac Jones. Listen, I'm not taking anything away from the kid. The kid is special. And I, love, and I think he's in the perfect system. Let's give credit where credit is due. If he was in Jacksonville, it wouldn't be happening. If he was playing even with Kyle Shanahan, I don't think it would be happening right now. If he was in Chicago with Matt Nagy, it wouldn't be happening right now. The fact that he goes and, and literally he walks from Nick Saban to Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick goes a long way. I'm not saying the kid can't play. I believe in him. I believed in him last year right. when I kept telling you Alabama was going to win the national championship, okay? The point that I'm trying to make to you is that – Why don't you switch I, places I, with Tim? Tim, you I, come I, to New York, way to stand to on Alabama. Limb there. Yeah, well, way yeah, to really just, just go well, hard well, on listen, that ledge, listen, man. I ain't picking the Gators. i tell you that okay. much. I ain't picking Wait, the Gators. Stephen A., can what? we do this thought experiment? What? Ryan Clark's going to join us later so he can say this on Why? TV. What, but what, what, but what, what, essentially, I heard him say on Get Up, he thinks that we're seeing Mac Jones do things that we've never seen a rookie quarterback do ever in history. So their next two games, they have the Titans and the Bills. The Patriots take care of business against the Titans. Will you change this narrative? It depends on what we see during the game. Like, for example, last night they're playing Atlanta, okay? Yeah, the Titans and the Bills are real competition. Allow me to finish. Their, 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 their offense wasn't high-powered or anything like that. But, you know, you saw Matt Ryan look awful. You saw Josh, you know, you, what, 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 Josh Rosen come in. He looked awful. The third stringer, Franks, throws one pass. Franks. That ends up being an interception. We saw all of that. We saw their defense being very opportunistic. If you play against Tennessee and Buffalo and your defense is playing lights out and that's what stands out, I'm not going to turn around and say they won because of Mac Jones. No, but Stephen, I think this is what's important is once they got the lead, the way their style of play wasn't to necessarily try to run it up and take more risk. It was to be able to control the clock, eliminate more possessions for Matt Ryan in their offense, take away a lot of the time of possession and win it the way that Bill has won it for so many years. I think he did exactly what Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels wanted Mac to do. And he executed besides one pass at a very high level the entire night. Guys, this is not a knock up against Mac Jones. I'm not saying the brother's a scrub and he can't play. I'm just saying, look at how elite this defense is. And then on the offensive side of the ball, look at their running game. You got this rookie, Ramondre Stevenson. He's got skills. You got Damian Harris. You've got this kid, Bolden. All of them are averaging over four yards a carry. They have a running game, okay? That's a top-notch running not game, and mistakes. they have a defense. He's not making mistakes. I'm saying and he's, he's, he's a good kid. And he's, he's a good quarterback. A rookie. He's a good quarterback. The question is, can the Patriots win because of him? I'm saying it's because of their defense and running game. He's got a bright future. He's got skills. But you're not hanging your hat on him to take you there. You're surrounding him with a lot of, of, of important supplementary parts that are going to help elevate him. That's what's happening with New England. That's not okay. happening with any of the other rookie quarterbacks right now. So right now, Tim said he would take the Chiefs in the AFC. Who are you taking at this moment before they play the Titans and then the Bills twice in the next four weeks? I don't know. Oh, man. 
Ooh. is the top. Are you going to go no, with hey, that? Listen, Stephen A. It can't be lukewarm right now. What do we got? I, I, you know? I, I am. I am. I, I have to confess. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have to confess, Tim. I mean, I can't, I can't front. I don't know. Because one minute I see Lamar Jackson, and then they wet the bed, even though I know it was a Thursday night game and three days off and all of this other stuff, and I don't expect that to last. I'm looking at New England. Obviously, Kansas City. And then you see Tennessee winning without Derrick Henry. I'd have to go with Just Tennessee. Like the ocean. If I, if I, if I had to pick wow. anybody right now, it would be Tennessee because Derrick Henry's going to be back for the playoffs. All I know is I heard like a lot of noises and ums and hmms and <laughs> yeah. uhs. And, I mean, it's yeah. true. I, I felt it's like true. I was in the ocean and I was just getting tossed it's, side hey, to hey, side hey, by hey. the way. I don't know it if he was like news. trying to put us to sleep with like, it, it, you know. It somewhere. is news because I am a bit more definitive than that usually. But I did not anticipate that question. I have to give it some thought. Yeah. But I'm going to roll with Tennessee because Derrick Henry will be back. Okay, play off time. you're not off the hook yet. Yes. Can the Titans beat the Cowboys? Everybody could beat the Cowboys. Oh. Cowboys won't. Cowboys won't get to so far. There we go. That Cowboys was won't get to so far. That's the Stephen A. Cowboys, I know. Cowboys won't get to so far. Cowboys are not getting to so far. It doesn't matter. The AFC don't even need to worry about them. Cowboys gonna be home by then. Okay. <laughs> We'll leave yes. it there, guys. Yes, right. uh, more on Mahomes in just a bit. Do people sleep on Patrick's greatness? Tim Tebow's got to take. As we talked about earlier, we are all locked in for Sunday's matchup, Cowboys Chiefs. But let's focus in on Patrick Mahomes. He's received a lot of criticism this season for falling off a bit, at one point leading the league in interceptions. But now that the tide is turning, have we been too hard on Showtime. Take a look at this full screen here. So Patrick Mahomes coming off his best performance of the year Sunday night in Vegas, throwing for a season-high 406, five touchdowns. He ranks second in the NFL this season in passing yards and TDs. However, only Sam Darnold and Joe Burrow have thrown more interceptions than Mahomes this season. Kind of a high-risk, high-reward sort of guy. Sam Acho joining the debate desk. Good to see you, Sam. As always, I'll get to you in a moment, but I want to start with Tim Tebow in Alabama. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Tim, has, yeah, has yeah. Patrick Mahomes yeah. become underappreciated? I think so. I mean, look at what, what he did last week. And it was the – it was oh. – so Patrick Mahomes three times in his career has thrown for 400 yards and five touchdowns. Peyton Manning's done – is tie, he's tied with Peyton Manning, tied with Dan Marino and Joe Montana for the most to ever do that. And it's really not even that big of a deal. You know, we, you haven't really talked about it on first take this week. It's like, okay, we're just talking about all these other things. That's Tim's a huge a deal. What Patrick Mahomes is doing is ridiculous. Yes, did he have to force it this year? Yes, a little bit, but that's because his defense was giving up touchdowns after touchdowns after touchdowns. So to stay in the big games, especially even to start the year against Cleveland, he did force it a little bit. But you could see him rally, understand a little bit what he was doing. Now he's changing it a little bit. He's still under control, and he's still probably the most dangerous quarterback in the NFL. <sighs> You know what, Tim? I love you, man. Sometimes I don't know what to do with you. Sometimes, sometimes, just, sometimes you just, you just, it's like, uh, uh, you, if you ever watch the honeymoon, it's like, you're gone. You're just gone, Tim. You all right, Ralph Krabs? You're gone. It doesn't make Listen, any I, sense. I, I, I think why you get upset is because sometimes the truth hurts, Stephen, eh? No, it's not the truth, Tim. <laughs> it's not the truth, Tim Tebow. It makes no sense. Patrick Mahomes, underappreciated. We recognize the greatness of this dude, Tom. What are you Tom, talking wait, about? Wait all year, you've <laughs> talked down about the Chiefs, and I've supported them. Listen, we can get all of the producers to throw up the clips, okay? okay. All year. Okay. I guess we can. All year. Uh, may I speak? May I speak? May I... Are you being rude and interrupting me? Is that what you're doing? Now you're being rude and I apologize. Me. Go ahead, Stephen. <laughs> go. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Here's the deal, Tim. They lose to Baltimore. They lose to the Chargers. But they got blown out by Buffalo, blown out by Tennessee when they only scored three points. And he went through a slew of games where he threw more interceptions over a few weeks than he threw all of last season because he only had yep. six interceptions last season. So when that happened, we obviously said, yo, what the hell's going on? This is, this is not the Patrick Mahomes we know and love. But this is the problem, and this is what I'm getting on you about because it's a bigger picture. Tim, I don't know if you know this, but you know, I, I kind of – Watch soap operas, you know. I, I, I'm a general hospital guy. Do I don't watch have that them? much. I don't have that much free time, and I don't like I don't. all that drama. Okay, well, Stephen A. Because I'm working. I'm Hold working. On. Do you watch them? I, or are my, you on my character's them? name is that's Brent. Honestly, that, that honestly Thank explains you. a lot. That, that's, that, 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 stay with me. Stay with me. I'm, my character's name is Brent. I'm a surveillance <laughs> expert for the mob. I have a recurring role on General <laughs> Hospital, and I'm actually going out there next month to film a few scenes in the middle of December. My point to you is this. There's a story that has to be told. 
even if you sense that you may know the outcome, you still must tell the story. And athletes like yourself and others always have a problem with people telling the stories. You want us to go to the finish line. No, we got to look at you and go like this. Hey, right now. This is what's going on. This is how you look. And when you look better, we give it to you. If you look worse, we bring that up. But telling the story is not underappreciating somebody. It's telling the story because that yes. is what the people want. I thought you were a man of the people. You're supposed to know this stuff, Tim. Hey, Stephen A., I, I am a man of the people, and I like telling real stories, not soap operas, all right? This isn't days of our lives, okay? This is actually the truth. We want to look at how good people are. And when you're comparing Patrick Mahomes and his intercept, more interceptions than last year, what you're comparing him against is his past greatness. And so to be able to dilute his greatness now, but that's underappreciating him, right? Oh Even God. though he's not as good as he was the last few years, he's still one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And he hasn't been talked about like that. He is still one get of the best. Sam, Sam, get on him, Sam. Sam. Talk Sam, to Sam Tim where, where Talk are, to who, Whose side are you on right now, Sam? Well, well, well Tim, I'll say this. It's, it's, it's not that Patrick Mahomes is being underappreciated. It's just that we expect more out of him. Like, we expect more out of Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has been great and consistently great. But this year, he slipped up. 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. This year, he's throwing the ball to the other team. This year, it's not just the defense that was playing bad. It's also Patrick Mahomes that was playing bad. It's not just the defense that needed to be better. Patrick Mahomes needed to be better. And so it's not that he's underappreciated by any stretch of the imagination. We actually appreciate him more than most. And that's why we're holding him to this higher Standard. If it was anybody else, any other quarterback, name 15, 20 other quarterbacks, they wouldn't even be having this conversation. But we know who Patrick Mahomes not only is, but we know what he has been. And so we're saying, Pat, you need to be better. We, we're holding you to your standard of being the best quarterback and MVP, Super Bowl champion. That's what we expect out of you. And so, yes, we actually we don't underappreciate him. If anything, we overappreciate him. We're in awe of his greatness, in awe of his ability to roll out the pocket and throw the ball left-handed, in awe of his ability just to make magic happen. And this year, for whatever reason, Patrick but, Mahomes but, has not been making magic happen. But, and but so what, why you're, what we've been saying, what we've been saying is, Pat, we need you to do what you did last week and make that magic happen. 400 yards. Five touchdowns. That's amazing. But we expect that. We can't have you go back to being I, a normal uh, human being. We need you to be I, Superman. I know, but my point is, is when you expect that to happen, it, it's like almost like what you're doing should be normal. It's not normal. When he rolls out, when he breaks tackles, when he throws at 60 yards, that's crazy. It's, it's, what he's done the last few years is ridiculous. So to say, oh, because he forced it a little bit because he's, I mean, still second in the league with TDs. I know he's forced it with 10 interceptions, but it's like you're expecting him. What do you want at 50 touchdowns and six interceptions? It's almost you're but, holding him to a standard that is just crazy. What he's done is the, ridiculous. That's the standard that he's created for himself. And so it's not like it's crazy. <sighs> that, that's Patrick Mahomes. You like know, it's not like that. That's know. who he is. That is the standard so, that he's so set. When, like, so when he he drops quick, to the quick, level of other quick. quarterbacks, we can't say he's below them. You have to say, okay, like he's still one of the top five, but he hasn't played up to his best. But That's what I out. mean by underappreciating. Check this out, Tim, my dog, Tim Tebow. You know about greatness. You understand greatness, yes. right? You've won Heisman. You've won Sam, national championships. And Sam, don't forget. He won Heisman, he won championships, and he's also, he was also, uh, I mean, a damn winner when it came to speeches, motivational speeches and, 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 with expectations by the that way, people didn't live up to, and he said, I promise you, it'll never happen again. By, that was Tim Tebow that said that. By the that way, by the way, Stephen A. Smith, he still is. That's he right. still knows what the standard is. So when you the go stand. into a speech and you have a standard, you know what to expect, right? I speak to, I get it, the standard. And you below, you perform below that standard, no one's undervaluing you. They're saying, oh, Man, like I expected better in Preach. college when you said, Man, I'm gonna take my team and we're never gonna lose another game, and you didn't lose it, it wasn't crazy. That was just Tim Tebow. And so, what we're expecting from Patrick Mahomes, it's not crazy, it's not nuts, it is Patrick Mahomes. And so, when you see you I, throwing these two interceptions one game, then two the next game, then one again, then two, it's like that's something's wrong, something's wrong, right? And now, all of a sudden, what he did last week is what we are to expect. And That's so undervalued right. is not what we, the word we should be using. Oh, underappreciated. Or underappreciated, none of that. We actually appreciate all of his greatness, That's and that's right. why we are so surprised that's right. Tim, that he looks human. Tim just being sensitive. That's what that is. Tim, <laughs> Tim Tebow's being sensitive. That's what that's about. That's what that's about. Okay? Stop it.
Nobody underappreciated Patrick Mahomes. Hey, Mahone. listen, all right. I just Amazon that hat for you for next week, all right, Stephen yes. A. <laughs> Amazon Prime, my best friend. Thank you, Tim. We needed some levity there. Uh, do we have a, a moment, producers? Can I get to the next topic? Do we have time? Let's do it. All right. What is the biggest obstacle, guys, between the Cowboys and the Super Bowl? I will start with you, uh, Southern Steve. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Southern Steve because I got something very, very important to say. See, sometimes in life, the biggest enemy is yourself. Mm-hmm. The biggest enemy comes from within. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, if you, if you look at this, your is, this your ac- is this your accent from Days of Our Lives? <laughs> General <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> General Hospital. <laughs> General I don't watch it anyway, so I don't know. All right. Okay. They might need to get the umbrella. Okay. General Hospital. Did your acting coach work on that? Did your acting coach work on that one? Brick is coming to Port Charles. Brick is coming to Port Charles. Now, here's the deal. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. Brick is coming to Port Charles. Now, here's the deal. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you right now, buddy. See, sometimes the enemy is within. <laughs> and that's the problem with them damn Dallas Cowboys. You see, what happens is, is that the expectations that have been showered down upon them might be a little bit too much. To see, regular season can't go by that. Ain't that much pressure during the regular season. Once you got a little lead in the NFC least, you ain't got anything to worry about because come the postseason, you're going to be there. When the postseason arrives and it's one game and you one and done, and you can't afford to make any states, any mistakes, and the palms get sweaty and the backsides get tight. That's when the Dallas Cowboys had the most trouble. And I predict that's exactly what's gonna happen this year, y'all. They gonna go down. Come playoff time. I don't think they'll win a playoff game. You hear? Hey Tim, Tim, tell me he needs to work on his line. He needs to work on his line. Uh, did, I, did I just watch an episode of Yellowstone? Like <laughs> Hey, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I think the biggest issue, Stephen, you actually make a really good point. The biggest issue isn't externally, right? Uh, the biggest issue is not, it's also not also the pressure that they put. Sometimes that internal pressure can come from management, right? Jerry Jones has a huge expectation. The last 25 years, the Cowboys have not won a Super Bowl. And now all of a sudden you start winning. All of a sudden management gets a little bit more involved. They start showing up more, even more than what they already have been. All of a sudden, I don't think the pressure gets to you, but just people start coming around and you start doing things differently. If the Cowboys stick to who they've been, the number one offense in the NFL in points and in yards, a top 10 defense in the NFL, if they stick to who they've been, to be who they've been, they will be fine. But sometimes Jerry Jones, you know I mean, the fact is he loves getting his hand involved in things. And sometimes getting your hand involved actually hurts your team. And so if he could take a step aside, let your coaches coach, let your players play, Cowboys will be fine. I actually agree with both of you guys. I think the pressure from inside, I think the management pressure, I think both of those will play into it. I also think another problem is that you have to go against um, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and they're pretty good. And, you know, since the, the Super Bowl, Mike McCarthy's been 5-6 and six with Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. And, and I just think when they match up, and I think he's a really good coach, but when they match up against Sean McVay or Bruce Arians, those guys in some of these game plans, I think they're phenomenal. I think that also plays into it. Tim Tebow? I reckon you're right. I reckon you're right. Tim, Tim I reckon you're right. Uh, you manhandled Stephen A today. I'm going to need you to be a little nicer next week, please. Really? Yeah. I apologize. Please. Yeah. Please. It's okay. It'll be Thanksgiving, please. so you know please. what? That'll be just the perfect time to just yeah. bring, out the hol- to bring out the holiday what? spirit. Yeah. yeah, of course. Have a very man. Wrong holiday. He can sing too. Okay. Tim, Tim, he's having, a, he's having a rough day. Listen, I, I love I'm you. I'm having a very good day. Wrong holiday. I'm having a very Tim, good day. Tim, we'll talk to you next week. It's Turkey <laughs> Day. It's not Merry Christmas yet. Oh. You have the wrong holiday. Holiday season. Holiday. Oh, my goodness. Holiday season. That's all I'm More football holiday. in just a bit. The Pats defense made mince me out of the Falcons last night. Does New England have a Super Bowl ceiling? Plus, Stephen A. opened the floodgates yesterday when he said one more title puts LeBron squarely in the go convo. Perk and RC weigh in in just a bit. Stephen A., I will never take fashion advice from you. This ain't happening. (laughs) Let me tell you now. Let me tell you how things work down there in old Texas where them cowboys reign. I am appalled that you would even think that you get to put on a cowboy hat. It is a disgrace. I'm going to tell you how he said it. His mind is still in Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. I, I look good, but I I need a haircut. You ain't got much to cut. You don't have much to cut. I tell you that. 
KD, you made the wrong decision, bro. And here's why. Because you trusted Kyrie. Kyrie Irving betrayed you. You live in two places. Why you is you in my face like that, Molly? I'm feeling the tactic of friendship, Molly. Is it the Cowboys or is it the Chiefs? Man, show who you agree with. Show it. You gonna be quiet? Okay, Sorry. so. Perceive it. In a substance like this, it would be behind his head. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. I didn't catch the ball. What was that? I think LeBron has won his last title. I think it's over. Okay. I'm glad I'm glad 15 games into the season you feel that way. Look at them James on my feet. Everything was no, fly. No, everything is until fly. I got to the sneakers. No, I'm all encompassing. I'm, I'm, I'm fluid. I'm fluid. I'm fluid. About. Fluid is a code word for cover my behind. New flat, I'm not more. I don't have much of a backside. So do it, it doesn't apply to me. Who wore it? Oh look at that. Here we go. It's hard to listen to someone trying to make a point in her pajamas. That's number one. Number two. Wow. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. See what I put up with. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with. But it's not about me, y'all. If you hear Ryan Clark laughing, he'll be with us in a second. Fresh hour, first take. Let's go. More likely to win a title this season. Tom Brady or LeBron James. Fellas heated about this one. And speaking of the king, what would one more title do for LeBron's legacy? Wait till you hear why another ring for LeBron could push him past MJ. Perk and RC react to that debate, which will never die. Plus, are the Cowboys the best team in the NFL right now? Second hour, first take. Let's go. Last night, New England put the smackdown on the Falcons in the ATL, pitching a 25 to nothing shutout. New England is starting to play their best football at just the right time, winning five straight. This defense, top two in the league. They're running the ball well. The rookie quarterback out of Alabama, Mac Jones, doing his job. New England sitting pretty at seven and four. But someone saw this coming before it manifested on the field. Ryan Clark talking that talk in New England, backing it up. The Patriots can mess around and go to the Super Bowl. Mac Jones is continuing to get better, but he's also Correct. pushing the football down the field when he has to. That was the thing, and that was the question that we have. The run game and the physicality is now showing week to week, and defensively they're being more and more opportunistic as the weeks go by. I think that's a formula for success. There he is, the prognosticator himself. Good morning, Ryan Clark. Thank you for being with us. Uh, What's we... up? Hey, Molly, those were yeah. not pajamas. You looked excellent in your outfit. Thank you. Thank Don't you. let Steve A. Smith hate on you. Thank you. I didn't I say that. she didn't look great. She always looks great. I said they were pajamas. That's all. <laughs> no, I said she looked bad. See how y'all try to twist it? I said she looked, I said it was pajamas. I didn't say she looked bad at all. Let me tell you a secret. Pajamas. My pajamas are not that fly. I okay. wish they were, all right? Okay. Uh, right, uh, right. I see, we will right. give you your flowers in a minute. By the way, speaking of fashion, we have a little fashion segment coming up later. We're going to break down some looks of some NBA and NFL players. Yeah, You're going to yeah, want to yeah. stick around for that. Maybe Ryan even, ain't going to be a part of that segment Michael looking Irvin. like this. No, our season in that. You know, he, he only save his outfit okay. when we go on the road. Right, let's get to the topic. Okay. You're okay. unbelievable. I'm coming to you, Stephen A. Are the Patriots, <laughs> let me say this again. I want you to hear me clearly. Chance. Are the New England Patriots a Super Bowl caliber team? Yes. Right now they are. I have to confess, and Ryan was right. But I have to use this as an opportunity to get on you, Molly. Because, you see, Molly introduced the topic and before she <laughs> asked the question rc before she asked the question she was like the prognosticator <laughs> he prophesized i didn't say I, I that, did. was, that was your word Talking but about, okay he, i did he, say prognosticator okay, he prognosticated predicted yeah. predicted, predicted. Did say prognosticator um, okay. ladies and gentlemen ryan clark said that november 8th what's today's date why molly acting like you said it in september why she acting like you said it in August? Bro. You said it 10 no. days ago. No. What are you no. What are you no. What is that? No. 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 This is, this is why you're a hater. We just got the clip from last week. It's, she was saying it prior to that. Listen, I, I have no recollection Did, did I agree I with no you, Stephen A? When you I said, no when you said wait, listen to me. Hold up, hold up. Because you say I never have your back. When we were talking about the Warriors, did I say you were picking the Warriors before the season even started? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's, yes. give, let's give Ryan his I'm not giving it to him. All right. It was nice. It was nice. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. It's oh, <laughs> so annoying sometimes. So. No, I, listen, that's what I do. That's what I do. I mean, that's just the way that I am. I mean, I'm the youngest of six with four sisters. Oh, it's what the, the way that you are. Me. That's how it, it is. I it is the way that you way. are. That's exactly true. Here's the deal, y'all. The Patriots' defense is what does it for me. Of course. 
I'm looking at them and yeah. you look at Van Noy, you look at McCordy, you look at Jackson, you look at these brothers. They're the number two ranked defense in the league. They are number two against the pass, number two against the rush. These boys are legit in that regard. Yep. And so for me, that's what stands out. Everybody looks at, all right, Matt Jones. Matt Jones is a damn good quarterback. Got a really, really bright future. Landed in the perfect system with the perfect coaches and Josh McDaniel and Bill yep. Belichick to guide him and bring him along. But this kid, Stevenson, Ramondre Stevenson, can run with the football. Had a nice yep. move last night, a nice run that was called back. But this brother can run with the football. Damian Harris can run with the football. This kid, Boulder, can run with the football. They got three different dudes averaging more than four, uh, four yards a carry. I'm looking at the New England Patriots, and I'm saying – what usually what what wins in the playoffs, particularly when you have to travel? It's a defense, defense and, and running game. game, and they have both. Yep, and that is what stands out in my mind. And when I think about what's going to stand in their way, Lamar Jackson could potentially stand in their way. Patrick Mahomes could potentially stand in their way. Josh Allen could potentially stand in the way. You know what my problem is with all three guys? Mm -hmm. They're all young, and they all have to go against Bill Belichick. Young quarterbacks who have to go against Bill Belichick. Now Patrick Mahomes did it when you know when they went when yeah. they went you know went to the Super Bowl won the, won the first Super Bowl. But remember, you know you you got a situation where hey, New England. I mean, the second half wasn't the first half. Bill Belichick and that defense came on strong and was handling their business, and he's given Patrick Mahomes a rough go at it from time to time. Bill Belichick is a genius, man. Coaching on that sideline, he knows what the hell Stephen he's doing. Stephen A. That's where I'm at. Stephen A. You know, you know, the, the the thing that does upset me is that I didn't start saying this until late last month. That, that that I didn't see it before. That I wasn't prognosticating well enough. That when Bill Belichick was was sitting in, in in his science lab and he was getting Matthew Judon and he knew he had High Tower coming back and he yep. goes to get Kyle Duggar from Lenore Ryan to in, in the second round last year. I wasn't paying attention to the building blocks. I wasn't paying attention to the pieces. And the problem was we were so focused on quarterback, right? And so when he goes out and he gets John New Smith and Hunter Henry that he can go back to 12 personnel, which is one one running back, two tight ends, two wide receivers, in which they were great in in the, in, in the late 2010s, right? In the 2008, 2009, they were excellent in that formation. Now we get back to that. And then they wait at 15 and they get the quarterback that's perfect for him, right? The quarterback that fits all of these pieces that they've put in place and they say, you know what? We're not going to jump up to get him. If the San Francisco 49ers warn him at three. Three is too high for us. We're not going to fight for that. We're not going to try to jump to 10 or 11 and get Justin Fields. If Mac Jones falls to 15, Mac Jones is our guy because we actually believe we've built a good enough team that if Cam Newton has to be our quarterback, we can win games. We remember that we're 7-9 and nine last season and it's a Seattle fourth down goal line stop, right? It's a Cam Newton fumble against the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo that keep us from being 9-7. and seven. So we know that we imp we've improved Improved. Now watch what we can do with a competent quarterback. And so Mac Jones becomes the quarterback. And just like every other Patriot season normally, they started a little slow. But what do we know about good football teams, especially good New England Patriot football teams? They play their best football in November, in December. Rob Nikovich is on Get Up With Me this morning. And he said Bill Belichick tells him football and the season doesn't really start until after Thanksgiving. And as we approach Thanksgiving, this team is doing this. Now I will say this. They got the Tennessee Titans coming up. They got the Indianapolis Colts coming up. And they got the Buffalo Bills twice. That's the next four weeks. And so what I'm saying now, this is what I feel. A defense like this, a run game like this, the best coach in the world, the best coach we've ever seen in the NFL, and a quarterback who's coming along and from the neck up is a veteran, they have a chance to get to the Super Bowl. The next four weeks, we'll know for sure. In four weeks, we'll be able to definitively say that Bill Belichick has done the greatest coaching job of his entire Higher career with the 2021 New England Patriots, and I believe that's exactly what we'll be saying. I think he's done a great job, mm -hmm. but you got a veteran defense, not a young defense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, it's like if it, it, I would go with that, you know, the, that, that that level of hyperbole, I would flow with you if the defense was significantly younger. He's got some veterans on that mm -hmm. squad, know what they're doing, and they've been around, yeah. not just in the NFL, but in his system. Yeah. So, again, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's like he's done a phenomenal job. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that defense is what we all 
didn't pay Absolutely. enough attention to because they were to coming back. They're veterans. You know they what? know what they do. Stephen doing. A., you did a phenomenal job. Right. You did a phenomenal job this segment because you admitted you were wrong. And I am so very proud it's, of you. It's, 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 I, I think that's. I think that should be breaking news. It's so they rare. Should, it's so ticker, rare. You know that ticker. I mean. It's like it's, you know. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's not it's rare that you're it's wrong. It's, it's rare, rare that you admit it. No, it's rare that I'm wrong. Okay, we're not going to debate it's this now. It's rare that I'm wrong. This guy, no, you <laughs> are perfect for debate. Tell he could debate anything. Let's you know go. Saying? Can't wait for <laughs> this one, guys. More light of it for two of the greatest athletes of all time lately. Tom Brady and LeBron James are synonymous with greatness, and most of all. Winning. But Tom Brady still a reigning Super Bowl champ, obviously, but his team has lost two straight and his coach says they're playing dumb football. LeBron is two years removed from a championship, but has struggled with injuries that have kept him off the court and put his team in a slump. You may have heard, but Stephen A has strong thoughts on what's next for King James. Let's run it back. I think LeBron has won his last title. I think it's over. Okay. I'm think, glad, I'm glad 15 games into the think, season I, I, you no, feel no, that way. It's not, it's not LeBron's fault. I believe this is the last championship LeBron James is going to win. Meaning it's over. Ain't no more championships mm. coming. That's exactly what I'm doing. Uh. I am eulogizing LeBron James. I want to say congratulations to LeBron James for a wondrous, <gasps> illustrious career. Wow. Yeah, that just happened. I, I mean, I need to take a moment, but I have to read. Uh, despite getting off this to an 8-8 eight and eight start this season, LeBron and the Lakers have the second shortest odds to win the NBA title at Caesar Sportsbook. Down south, Tampa Bay also has the second shortest odds to win the fr Pro Football Championship, trailing only Buffalo. Kendrick Perkins joins us now. Hi, Perk. Good to see you. I know, a lot happened. He looks very nice in blue. Stephen, they fix your face when I come over here, man. Well, let me tell you what, you know can, what I, can, I, can I tell you what my problem is? Ooh. Can I tell you what my problem is? Ooh. The blazer is really, really nice. I've just seen it twice in the last <laughs> seven go. days. I've seen it twice in the last seven days. I, need, an, I need another blazer. What is wrong with I, you? I need another blazer. I, can. I, need another blazer. Hey, I just cannot hey, believe this no, is happening listen, right listen, now. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. When, you, when you're traveling from Houston to L.A. every week and you ain't only at home for two Bro, days, then you got to okay, mix it up. Okay. Got you got to yeah. mix it up. You got to mix it up. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Is, this an is this an episode of Mean Girls? I know. Like, what you Thank doing, Steve? Thank you, Ryan. And I just got... I, I just got to make sure you on me. I just make sure you on me. Oh, so you could get on me. You could <laughs> stroll in the studio, fly in from Louisiana, saunter into this studio, and brag about your wardrobe, but I say something and I'm being cool. I'll be clean. I be clean though. Let's let's go. Go. I'm just saying. I'm gonna deal with Ryan. I'm gonna deal with Ryan when I see him. I'm gonna deal with Ryan when I see him. My goal in life, whenever I travel, is to never check a bag. So I am right there with you. We will leave I'm it on that note. I feel right? y'all on that. I, I mean, that wastes that. like two hours of time in your life. I feel y'all on that. Okay, Ryan. Who's more correct. likely? Producers are real angry at me. Who's more so, likely to win okay. a type? I, I'm a rule follower. Okay. Have you not learned this? I'm not. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. Who is more likely to win a title this season, LeBron or Brady? Listen, Ryan, despite you, yeah. what Stephen A. Yeah, despite what Stephen A. Cryptkeeper has been saying about LeBron James, despite the eulogy, the eulogies that he's written, despite all of the goodbyes that he said, it's LeBron James because I love Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. He's the greatest player. He's the greatest quarterback. But he <coughs> plays a game that got to go offense, defense, special teams. He plays a game that if you watched last season, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't win the Super Bowl because of Tom Brady. Now, I know he could be the catalyst and he could be the base and he could be the foundation and getting him makes you believe and he does play well and a ton of spurts during last season but he wasn't playing his best football in the playoffs when he threw three interceptions against the Green Bay Packers he wasn't the reason they won against the New Orleans Saints it was the rest of the team and guess what Stephen A the rest of the team ain't as good right now they're actually from what Bruce Arian says dumb football players here's what I know about LeBron James and Kendrick Perkins could back me up on this I'm sure Every team LeBron James is on and LeBron James is healthy, that team has a great chance of going to the finals. 
period. If LeBron James is healthy and LeBron James is ready to roll, there is no player in basketball in the, the entire era that he's been playing that changes the fortune of basketball teams like he does. Whether it's defensively, whether it's floor general, whether it's scoring, whatever you need in those weeks of the playoffs, LeBron James has provided it over every player that's living right now, that's playing basketball actively. And so to Tom Brady can change the fortunes of an NFL football team more than LeBron James can an NBA basketball team is crazy. Dude is one of the greatest players of all time. I think when it's over, we're going to have to admit it's the greatest career of all time. And for the way that you've been acting, Stephen Naismith, you must have forgot all that basketball you've watched to go against LeBron James like this because he's been a better man than Aaron Rodgers ever was, who you talk about more than Tom Brady. Ooh, he I have. He preaches. Stay, stay, stay right there. Stay right there because I know you said I'll, I'll take care of Ryan right now. I'll take care of Ryan right now with his drivel. It don't matter to me what the hell he just said. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm gonna I ain't going to shut up and dribble, though. I, I, I'm going to tell you why. I said drivel, not dribble. But here's the deal. <laughs> Look up the word. That's number one. Here's the deal. If you want to ask, answer the question about Brady or LeBron, okay, I give you that. I understand where you're coming from, okay? I'm not going there. Let me go back to where, okay. I, where I was. LeBron ain't winning the championship. It's over. Because the, Warriors? the Golden State Warriors are in the Western Conference. I didn't say that LeBron wasn't great. I would remind you I have him on my Mount Rushmore. I don't have Aaron Rodgers on my Mount Rushmore, even though he's a bad man. I understand the greatness of LeBron James and what he has done. Put Ryan Clark back up on that screen with uh, Kendrick Perkins. Let me tell you something, I'm Ryan here. Clark. Let me tell you something, Ryan Clark. Um, I've lost three <laughs> times with my predictions where I picked LeBron James to win the title. I picked him to beat Dallas. I picked him to beat the Spurs, okay? I did that, all right? Won one time with them. Lost another time with them. What I'm saying to you is that it ain't like the man's got a flawless record. I'm not knocking him. I know the greatness of LeBron James. And by the way, I told Perk this yesterday. When LeBron was hurt and he comes back, I said, yo, at 36, approaching 37, in his 19th season, I expect this brother to be every bit as great as we expect him to be. I think it's a damn shame that the rest of the Lakers are relying on a man entering his 19th year to do what he does instead of stepping up and helping him more so he doesn't have to do those things. But none of that. I ain't throwing no shade. I'm getting ready to go to Boston tonight to watch the Lakers. Where do you now? Both of y'all know me well. Love both of y'all like brothers. <laughs> Where the hell do I want to be in June? Yeah. Where Why do you I want to be at? Do you, do you have any in idea how much it hurts me <laughs> to believe that I'm going to be in the damn Bay Area in San Francisco instead of La La? You think I want to say this? You think I want to be in San Francisco? It's Kenny Perkins, you know me. You see that smile on my face when I'm in when I'm in LA. Come on, Don't bro. You but Don't but you Joe, start. but Joe, we talking basketball. And when I see what I'm seeing with the Warriors, and they're younger than LeBron, and LeBron's got two, three years left, Max, I don't believe, I don't believe he's leaving LA, so he's gonna be a Laker. And I believe as long as he's out there with the Lakers, they ain't getting past Golden State. That's my position. You know what, Stephen A., I'm going to get at you in a minute. True. I got to get at my brother Ryan Clark for a second and stay on the topic, right? You like to break the rules. I'm going to follow the rules, which means I'm going to follow the topic. More likely to win this season, Brady or LeBron. And you know how I feel about LeBron James. And it's not LeBron James that I don't trust. It's the others. You just talked about it, Stephen A. But when we mm -hmm. talk about Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we talk about a team that just came off of winning the championship, Ryan Clark, and you, of all people, should know better being a former champion yourself yeah. that their <laughs> next season, that their <laughs> next season, yeah, yeah, that their next season, you know that when you go and play in the regular season, you're going to get every team's best. 
So I know that Tampa Bay mm -hmm. has lost a few games lately, but they're the champions. Sometimes you get bored with the process. Sometimes your coach has to come out publicly and wake you up and call you a dumb football team just to wake you up, just to send a message. Here's the thing. I know what I'm going to get out of Tom Brady supporting Cavs. Right now, I don't know what I'm going to get out of LeBron James supporting Cavs. I'm not talking about Anthony Davis, who he won the championship with. I'm talking about the play of Russell Westbrook right now. He's the X factor. So when I look at Tom Terrific and look at what he's doing, his leadership skills, I feel like when it matters the most and the time gets close, I feel like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to elevate their game, and that's why I'm picking Brady to most you know likely what? win the so championship over LeBron. You know what, man? Like, I, 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 I thought, I was like, I'm going to be on here with Perk. Perk always makes a ton of sense when it comes to basketball. Unlike Stephen A., Perk is going to see this the way I see it. And and then Perk's always – and and then so for, for, for Perk to forget that, you know, even when Russell Westbrook was with Washington last year, the year started off shaky. It was terrible shooting. But as Russell Westbrook continued in the year, as Russell Westbrook started to feel itself out, Russell Westbrook played like great basketball going down the stretch. And if not for an ankle injury, I believe he's more competitive and that team's more competitive in the playoffs. They got the Washington Wizards to the playoff without without uh, Pope, without Montrez Harrell, without Kyle Kuzma that they had to trade for Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook did that. And for you to go against Russ like this, why not Russ, Kendrick? And LeBron James? Bruh, I get it. No. No. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers brought everybody back. That team ain't playing the same. Yep. Shaq yep. Barrett ain't rushing the quarterback the same. Devin White, Levante David ain't dominating. The secondary is Can injured. AB is out. Yep. Rob Gronkowski is out. Hey, Ryan, Can he respond? Ryan, Ryan, Ryan let Can me you say Go this. ahead, man. And, and, and Stephen A., I, I was excited about coming on here with Ryan Clark as well. But as a real brother... You need a real brother to tell you what you need to hear and not what wrong. you want to hear. <laughs> not okay? what you want. So, yeah, so I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you what you need to hear. And Stephen A can tell you that how I feel, and you know this, how I feel about Russell Westbrook. But we can't compare last year to him for him being in Washington and what he did for the Wizards. Because it wasn't no expectations. It wasn't no pressure. Now you go back home where you're from, born and raised, and you go play with LeBron James for the Los Angeles Lakers, one of the most historical yep. franchises in NBA history. So at the end of the day, it's a lot of pressure, Ryan Clark. I'm not knocking Russell Westbrook. Don't no man, no man that wears a, a neck crop top and bell bottoms is worried about pressure. We Russell have Westbrook no ain't worried about no pressure, man. We have no comeback for that, but I will say this. I hear Ryan Clark and this noise about the Warriors. I heard KP yesterday. The beauty of it is, Lord willing, they ain't going nowhere. They will be here at the end of the season, Stephen A. And so will the were the Lakers. Right. You were right, Stephen A. Why you, you got to right. no. you drag your voice no. like no, that? No, no, no. We got to go. Gotta we got to go. go. I, I got to, I got to stuck on, is this an episode of Mean Girls? I never got past that one line. Right. I was solid. We know you would. Solid description know you would. of the show. We know you would. Uh, let's win you some money. How about it, Stephen A? If you're interested in playing some smart wagers on this weekend's game, Stephen A, RC, Acho, break down some stars, players' chances, having huge Sundays. It is Molly Steele. Stay tuned. That's coming up. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more still here on First Take. Look who's joining the party. He's Say back. Macho He's back. back in the building. Good to see you, sir. Lots of HBCU football action tomorrow. Take a look at some of these matchups. Tennessee State and Prairie View with tough tests, both against SEC teams. Please enjoy all the games. Stephen A, get excited. Your boys are taking on Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs this Sunday. The Chiefs are starting to look like their old selves, having won three straight and are alone atop the AFC West for the first time this season. Uh, uh, the Cowboys, they're not doing too bad themselves. They lead the NFL in points per game and yards per game this season. This is the latest into a season. They've led the NFL in points per game and yards per game since 1990. Wait, do you want, I got to read this again. 
No. Get this straight. Okay. Get this straight. They lead the NFL in points per game and yards per game this season. Right. This is the latest into a season. They've led the NFL in points per game and yards per game since the 90s. It's a new day, Stephen A. Smith, and Sam Macho is back. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen A., okay. are the Cowboys the best team in football? Hell to the no. Hell to the no. Hey, Stephen Ooh, A., can I point something out before you start? With that line. Go ahead. Can I? Can I, can I point something out, Stephen A? Yes, yes. Um, but also, what, what, what the other thing that Molly didn't mention, it's since yes. 1995. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened in 1995, Stephen A? They won the Super Bowl. Yeah, okay. I'm just yeah. checking. Thank I'm just you. checking. I'm, I'm, I'm fully just aware. Checking. I'm fully yeah. aware. Yes, I understand that there are things that are transpiring, that are reminiscent of the Cowboys from the 90s. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand it. But you know what? This is a regular season. It's a regular season. And I oh, will remind okay. y'all, I will remind y'all, let's let's analyze the stretch that they went through. You know, they played Daniel Jones. Okay. They played Sam Donald. Oh. You know what I'm saying? They played Kirk mm. Cousins. I mean, you know, I'm watching. Mm. I'm watching. I'm seeing this cupcake schedule. All right. Even though they got blitzed by mm. Teddy Bridgewater. Different subject for another day. <sighs> Cowboys ain't the best team in the National Football League. Mm. They're formidable. They're very impressive. They're a legit Super Bowl contender. Incredible leadership from Dak Prescott. Very happy he got his money. And my buddy Jerry Jones, I mean, it's not like I'm rooting against that man. It's them damn cowboy fans that I can't stand. Uh, I just wish they'd all just mm -hmm. go someplace, okay? I just can't stand them. And I'm telling you something right now. That's the only thing that's hard about this year, that I don't get to troll them until after the holidays. I've been I've been very consistent <laughs> and successful in being able to troll them leading into don't the worry. holidays. You've, you've so, found plenty listen, of people to troll. Listen, You're let's good. find a way. Listen, still want to watch this. One of my all-time favorite photos was when the Dallas was getting, Cowboys was getting blitzed by the Redskins. And, and, and I think it was Thanksgiving. And this dude was just sitting there with his head in his hands. And his girlfriend was just hugging him. It's going to be all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Wrong it's with beautiful. you. It's my favorite photo of the year. <laughs> What happened to you as a child? I can't, I can't do that this oh year. God. I can't do that this year leading Stephen into Thanksgiving a. or Christmas. Keeper. But I can do it. But I can do it come January. Because pressure breaks pipes. And the level of expectations and the pressure that that is going to mount on this franchise, they will wilt. Okay, enough of you. Sam pressure. Macho. Uh, Packers. I, I think the Cowboys are the best team in the NFL. And, and I think some of what we can point to, some of what we can point to are, are the facts and the statistics. And I understand that stats can be uh, maneuvered and manufactured in a, in a multiple Numbers do lie sometimes. Ways. Numbers do lie. But what doesn't lie is the tape, right? The numbers say the Cowboys yeah. have the number one offense Tell in yards again, and points. What don't lie is the tape. The film don't lie. We used to say in lie. football, the big eye in the sky don't lie. And when you watch this Cowboys football team, they are playing offensively, statistically, and on tape like the best team in football. Defensively, they're playing like a top 10 defense. Remember last year, the defense was atrocious. It was horrible. Last year was a top bottom three in the league. And now all of a sudden, they're in the top 10 in the league. They're forcing turnovers. They're doing everything you would want a championship team to do. So you go to, okay, cool. They're probably, one, probably the best, I would say, in the NFC. Then you go to AFC. I think the Titans, you could talk about the Patriots if you want to. I think the Titans are the best team in the AFC. Then I look at that matchup. I say, man, that Cowboys offense and that Titans defense, I like the Cowboys offense in that matchup as well. And so for me, it's got to be the Cowboys because they've proven it. They've proven it week in and week out, minus a minor hiccup. RC? Bottom line, the Cowboys are the best team in the league because they can beat you multiple ways offensively. Defensively, they've shown they can turn the football over, be stingy when they need to, and special teams, they make game-changing plays. It's three phases of football, and they make plays in all three phases, and that's unlike any other team in the NFL, best team in ball. Well, listen, you can say that, and I appreciate where you're coming from, and I'm not going to knock it all. All I'm trying to say to you is this. The level of competition that you're going up against does matter. I mean, I'm going to pay attention to that right now. I know they're 7-2 on the season, but I'm just going to look at the schedule, and I'm just going to remind you. I'm just going to go through the stretch before we depart from this. Stephen just A., to refresh you, do, do you not time. have to abide by the rules? Do you go not go have ahead, to abide ahead, by the first RC. two rules? What did I do? Because everybody's in my everybody's in my ear. They telling me, hurry up, RC, quick response, quick response. So I'm thinking I respond and we go to commercial. So I respond, they telling me quick response just yeah. so you get a rebuttal? Well, actually, he losing? wasn't supposed to rebuttal. He's supposed to pick the game. But... I want to hear the rebuttal personally. Just want to ask this, okay? Um, since September 27th, oh, Jalen mm -hmm. Hurts, yeah. Sam Donald, 
Daniel Jones. Philly's looking pretty good. Keep going. Matt Jones, Kirk Cousins, Teddy Bridgewater, Matt Ryan. Um, Sam Acho, you hear Aaron Rodgers' name in there? I didn't. Hold on. Hold on. Oh hear Tom Brady's name in there? I didn't. Hold on. You said, yeah, man, oh Mustafa, you know he had a rough week. Here's his name there. All right, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. You heard Kyler Murray's name in there. I mean, did you hear any of those names? Did you hear any of those names? I did not. I did not. I'm just saying. But I will okay. say this. Okay. I will okay. say this. One okay. comment. Okay. One comment, Stephen A. That same statistic you used for the Cowboys. It's not a stat. Yeah, yeah, the, sa- the same schedule. The same schedule you look at the Cowboys. Go look at the schedule of the Patriots. It's 5-0 and run. It hasn't been very, they haven't been world beaters. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm getting control back. Who's winning this game? I think the Cowboys will win this game. All right, whatever. After <laughs> all that, after you pick the all Cowboys? that, yeah. Okay, after let's all that, the game. no, no, no! Don't explain yourself. We need to cut his mic. Commercial break. Well, you know, co- Checking in on some injury updates in Green Bay and Arizona for the Packers. They will be missing starting running back Aaron Jones, who's out with a knee injury. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers has not participated in the Packers' last two practices with a toe issue. The Cardinals are hoping to get back. Kyler Murray with an ankle and DeAndre Hopkins with a hamstring, both of whom have missed each of Arizona's last two games. Kyler practiced in limited capacity on Wednesday and Thursday, while Hopkins did not participate either day. All right, with big injuries playing the pack in the cards, who is more likely to be upset, the Packers or the Cardinals, Ryan? You know what? I think it's the Packers because I believe the Minnesota Vikings are going to win this game. I believe when you look at the trio of skilled players the Minnesota Vikings have in in the Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and Delvin Cook, I don't know if there's a better trio in the league. And I know sometimes we we, we don't want to give Kirk Cousins his flowers. We don't want to say that he's a good quarterback, but he is a good quarterback. And when he gets hot, he can sometimes be a very good quarterback. This is a team that just goes to L.A. and beats the Chargers. And I think that a Mike Zimmer defense that is 7-7. Seven and one against Aaron Rodgers finally goes up eight seven and one because the Vikings win this game against the Packers. I think it's a toss up. I think being in Minnesota, this team knowing that they need a win and want to show the world that even though they've been they've been up in every game this year, the only team that's been up in every game this year by a touchdown, they just lost some at the end. This time they find a way to pull it out and they beat the Packers. So a team that finds a way to lose or suddenly gonna find a way to win. Good luck. Good argument with that. That's beautiful. This is a beautiful argument. I mean, I got to take notes from you. I mean, my God. Really? That's, Please. That's, 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 it's, so that's it's, what you break it down it's to? The, it's the Seahawks. That's what you break it's it down the, to? That's what you said. I'm just, I'm just quoting you. The Seahawks to me. So the Seahawks well, so, go beat the Cardinals at the score no finish. point? The question is more likely to be upset. Why? Because we're talking about Kyler Murray potentially not playing. We're talking about Colt McCoy being up there as Arizona's quarterback. We talk about Russell Wilson being back. And we talk about the Seahawks being three and six at home, understanding if they lose this season, if they lose this game, their season is over. Some would argue it's over already. I don't believe that. But obviously, it's not looking very, very good. They lose this game. It's official. They're done. I think their backs are against the wall significantly more than Minnesota. As a result, they have to win this game. And going up against a team potentially without Kyler Murray, I think bodes well for Seattle. I think more likely to be upset this weekend is the Cardinals. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure to consider it an upset if Colt McCoy is the one quarterback it. Yeah, I agree with that. You want to go with injuries and all those things. I believe with Kyler Murray practicing, he will play. We saw this year that Kyler Murray can throw from the pocket. Kyler Murray can throw on time. I agree with that. The Seattle Seahawks didn't look good at all offensively last week in Russell Wilson's return. I expect that Arizona Cardinals have Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray plays well. The defense rebounds from a bad game against Carolina, and they win. Hey, Ryan. I think the Green Bay Packers are the team on the biggest upset alert this Who's week. Who's the better uh, team uh, at full strength, Stephen I, 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 I think I think the better team at full strength is obviously the Packers and the Cardinals, no doubt about it. But I'll say this, Ryan, I got a question for you real quick in all seriousness. Watching Seattle last week, man, I don't think yeah. Pete Carroll has their ear anymore the way that he used to. There's something missing now yeah. when I watch this team react to Pete Carroll in a way, I mean, I've grown accustomed to seeing answer it. Here, I don't see that anymore. Yeah, so my, 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 my quick answer is this. The Legion of Boom is what used to lead this team. This defense led this team. This team is now led by its quarterback. The quarterback has no respect for Pete Carroll publicly. The quarterback has no respect for John Snyder, the GM, publicly. The quarterback has questioned things that has gone on there. So now when you're a leader, the, 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 the most visible face in your organization is questioning your coach. Yeah. I believe that trickles down to the rest of the team. Okay.
Interesting. See, yeah. when I say quick, Ryan, I go right to break. A special treat for the viewers coming up shortly. <laughs> Mr. Fashion himself. And time now for some quick takes. John ja Moran scored 17 of his 28 points in a third quarter rally to beat the Clippers last night. Stephen A., is Morant a top 10 player in the NBA? I have to think about it, but I got to say I'm inclined to say yes. The brother is a closer. Uh, he's an athletic freak. Uh, he's got a lot of heart athleticism, and more importantly, he should have been a New York Nick. If the New York Knicks had one <sighs> pick earlier, it would have been there. Who shouldn't have been a New York Knick? Okay, Jay will the Heat won again, this time beating the Wizards, who had won five of their last six. Are the Heat the team to beat in the East, Jay will They are playing the best basketball in the East, but I, I'm still not going to disrespect the world champions. The Milwaukee Bucks are still the team to beat in the East, even though they are ranked right now 11th Actually, they're tied for ninth uh, with the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference. But still, Chris Middleton coming back off COVID. Drew Holiday finally getting healthy. This team all together is still a team that just won a championship. Chef Curry with the shot. Steph keeps lighting it up, scoring 40 in a comeback win versus the Cavs. Stephen A., is Curry the best player in the NBA right now? Yes. Easy question. Easy answer. Yes. Well, hear me repeat that. Nobody can refute that. No. Yes. Yes. And yes again. Okay. Unanimous decision. We are only a month into the season, and Stephen A. already has Twitter-trending takes like this. The Warriors will be hoisting the Larry O'Brien this season. Then he took it a step further, saying the Dubs will win two of the next three, assuming Clay Thompson is back to being Clay. All splash. Then he took it a step further, saying no mas when it comes to LeBron James, as in the King will never get another ring, essentially retiring him. Don't believe me? Listen for yourself. I think LeBron has won his last title. I think it's over. Okay. I'm think, glad, I'm glad 15 games into think, the season I, I, you I, I, feel no, that way. It's not, it's not LeBron's fault. I believe this is the last championship LeBron James is going to win. Meaning it's over. Ain't no more championships mm. coming. That's exactly what I'm doing. Uh. I am eulogizing LeBron James. I want to say congratulations to LeBron James for a wondrous... <gasps> Illustrious career. You know. You wrote this man's eulogy, huh? Yeah. I, I got to ask you, because I'm a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. So that day you said LeBron James will never win another world championship. But then the following day I heard you in a conversation with Big Perk where you kind of hedged your bet. No, nope. because you said if LeBron wins a championship, right. I might consider him to be the greatest well, that's of all because, time. That's so, only because that Kendrick Perkins is texting me all the time and he's going back and forth reminding me that he believes LeBron's the GOAT. And I keep telling him, hell no, hell no, hell no, MJ. So basically what I was saying to him is that if that happened, I didn't you were to get your one. conversation. Yeah, but I said it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. So can you give me some reasons why so definitively in your mind that you believe because, LeBron James? Because never. He never is well, a strong statement. Well, well, first of all, all right, you want me to give you that or you yes. want, or you want, you want to let the world know how you feel? No, Which, I'm, well, right. it was a little bit of both, okay, but I'm here's, ready. Here's the deal. <sighs> I am in no way knocking LeBron. I don't have any doubt that LeBron James is going to come back when healthy and look the way we expect him to look. Mm -hmm. It's not about him. It's about what I'm watching from the Golden State Warriors. And it's about the fact that they're not going anywhere. They're not going away. I don't believe LeBron is leaving Tinseltown. I believe that this is his final home. He will retire a Los Angeles Laker. That's what I believe. Unless he retires, you know, it is over. And then he goes and, we're, you know, retires as a Cleveland Cavaliers on a one-day contract, something like that. This is it for him. Mm -hmm. This is his playing career. And so I'm looking at the personnel that you've got. The Anthony Davises of the world. The Russell Westbrooks of the world. THT, who I like a lot, mm -hmm. the whole bit. I'm not knocking any of those guys. None of them. I'm looking at you in your face and telling you, LeBron, AD, Russell Westbrook at his at their best against the Warriors at their best once Clay returns. It's over. They're not beating them. I believe watching this team, Steph Curry is sensational, the greatest shooter God ever created. I would agree. I'm looking at Jordan Poole and his evolution and his elevation. Draymond Green is hitting jump shots now. I'm looking at Toscano and I'm looking at Damian Lee and I'm looking at, at, at this kid Kaminga coming off the bench and I'm looking and then I'm looking. Uh, wait a minute. Wiseman and Clay coming back? Because remember, I keep bringing up Wiseman for this two reasons. Number one, he's not a scrub. 
He's not a scrub. He can play. And number two, they won titles with Ja Ja Pajulia mm -hmm. and, and Andrew Bogut in the middle. You can't win with James Wiseman if you got those other pieces around. I see it. That's what I'm saying. I don't believe that. In, in other words, both teams are going to be there. They ain't beating the Warriors. That's what I'm saying. So you believe that Klay Thompson is going to come back and be the Klay Thompson that he was two years ago? I even ago? said this. I even said okay. this. Give me Klay Thompson at 80% is all he needs. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's enough to beat the Lakers. They're just too, Warriors are just too good. They're just too good. That's what I'm saying. This is not me saying, oh, LeBron has slipped. And LeBron. No. I, the, that. great, the greatness is the greatness. I'm saying it won't be good enough. One of the most beautiful things about basketball in any sport, mm -hmm. it's a marathon, not a sprint. Sure. So we're, you're talking about a sprint right now. It's mm -hmm. been one hell of a sprint. You're not going to sit up here. I'm not going to sit up here on national TV and tell you that the Golden State Warriors are not playing the best basketball in mm -hmm. the NBA right yeah. now because they are. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if Steph's health is going to sustain throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. You can say that about a lot of people. I've seen him have a tendency to get injured time and time when his use is raised very high. Mm -hmm. I do wonder how Clay is going to come back mm -hmm. considering – Different injuries on different sides of his body, right? Mm -hmm. Torn ACL on one side, Achilles on the other. Will he come back and be the version of he was? Mm -hmm. I just think it's so disrespectful to a guy that's in the conversation. He may not be your GOAT, mm -hmm. but a guy who could be considered the GOAT. Mm -hmm. I consider him mm -hmm. the GOAT in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That you He's can just not. cancel oh, him out and say definitively mm -hmm. 15 games into mm -hmm. the season mm -hmm. that he will never win another world title. Look, never. All right. Just due to a tough allow, start allow, that they've Allow had. me to interject. Allow me to interject. Number one, let me school you. First of all, sir, don't come to me with marathon supposed to, to, to sprint. I'm 54. You're 40. Oh, I have, I, I have oh wait, wait. No, no, in, other words, I have a, I, in other words, what I'm saying is I, I, I would know something about the marathon. In other words, I'm older. I'm just saying I'm a senior citizen. I'm older. I'm older than you. Okay? So I know, I, know, I, know, I know what a marathon and a sprint is. That's you number one. You would turn that into a debate. That's, that's <laughs> number one. I'm just older. That's all I'm saying. It's nothing to do with life experience. I, I understand. That's a number. number. Okay. okay. So, so number one. Number two, it's not disrespectful to LeBron. As a matter of fact, it's very respectful. Let me tell you why. Because I mentioned him. I didn't mention a whole bunch of other dudes because they ain't relevant. I'm saying at 36 in your 19th year, I still expect you to be great. LeBron James was great when he lost not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six titles. Why can't he lose a seven? Not that it's going to come to that because he won't be in the finals, but he's lost six times. Even when he was great. You know why? Because the pieces around you matter. And all I'm saying to you is that I don't talk about injuries. Of course, if people get injured, they course. I'm saying LeBron at his best. Mm -hmm. LeBron, I'm saying LeBron Lakers, James at his best. I'm saying LeBron at his best. The Lakers at their best. And the Warriors at their best. They ain't beating the Warriors. That's what I'm saying. That's all Even I'm saying. I'm not disrespecting. I'm not disrespecting LeBron or the Lakers in any way. We're talking basketball. And I believe that when healthy and fully loaded, the Warriors are the best. I think they'll smoke Milwaukee. I think that the, I think the only team that has a prayer Miami is if Kyrie comes back right. to Brooklyn and AD and, and Kyrie KD and James Harden are at their best. The, the, that's the only chance I'm giving anybody for beating this Warriors team. So you know what healthy. you're doing? You're feeding into how LeBron James gets motivated by saying this number one. I don't care. We didn't, for you to do we have here, to play? We we want to watch. For don't you we? sit here and say because I'm Stephen A. and I mention your name. For great, that's so disrespectful. I don't know how you can't see that. You said LeBron James and never. Yes. You're saying one of the greatest players to ever play the game of basketball and never in the same sentence. No, 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 no. All I mean is, well, I said, I said, well, I'm saying it's over. What I'm saying to you is this. He's 36. He's scheduled to play maybe about three more years. Okay. I believe the Golden State Warriors are going to be standing right there saying, no, that's, it's they over. They be standing what, there that, together. No, no, I'm saying they're going to stop it. They're the roadblock. That's what I'm saying. How is this hard to understand? No, it's not hard to understand. Can, just, I, can I ask one question? Do you feel like you might be prisoner of the moment because you haven't seen LeBron on the court in 10 I games? I would remind you. I'm glad you asked that question. I would remind you, Molly, who was here last year before Klay Thompson was even scheduled to come back? And I was saying next year, the Golden State, meaning next year is in this last season. I was like, next season, Golden State Warriors going to be in the conference. Yeah, he was. That would be, that would be me. True. Okay. That's how I've always believed in them. But I still didn't see this. And so what I'm saying to you is that I'm watching. I believed in them to begin with. 
But now that I've watched them and I've seen Jordan Poole and these boys playing, and I see their movement without the basketball, and I see their defense, which is a top three defense, and I see the passing ability, and I just see everything. I'm going like this. The Lakers can't beat them. Thank you for schooling me. About, I'm not schooling no, you. No, about no, no. That's what you said before. No, you were going to school well, I'm just, me. I was just talking about marathon Look, compared to sprint because of my age. Can I, can I, I school you about something? Because you know basketball. You know the first 15, 20 games are like the preseason for sure. vets, right? Sure. For vets, right? Sure. So I know that we dig into the weeds mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this team defensively. Right. Right. And I heard you the other day about Anthony Davis. And I would agree about Anthony Davis and Giannis to a degree. Anthony Davis needs to find a little bit more dog in him in those That's type of I moments. That's all I said. That was I all I was you. But you have to understand – what LeBron James does to teams when he comes around, yes. it's a different feeling. I agree. Right? I agree. And my thing is, I understand there are questions around Russell Westbrook when they get Trevor Ariza back, mm -hmm. when they get Kendrick mm -hmm. Nunn back mm -hmm. with the way THT is playing. That is a team. Mm -hmm. So to sit there and say definitively, right, right, never right, again, right, right, right. that puts a little pressure well, on you, man. Saying, I would never well, do that to LeBron Well, I'm James. saying never again because I'm anticipating. The brother ain't playing the next 10, 15 years. He's, he's done in three. So what I'm saying to you is that over the next three years, I but think... But never that, zero, well, Stephen A. Because, zero percent. Because That's not even listen, 20 percent. Listen, listen, if LeBron played two more years and I said it ain't, it's over for you, is that really an insult when you only got two years left? Now, if you got 10 years yes. left, I get you. No, it's not. Yes, Stephen excuse A. Excuse me. Time out, time out, time out. LeBron James, Steph Curry has three titles. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Who are those three titles against? LeBron James. Thank you. Okay. In other words, it ain't like it hasn't happened before. You're saying it in the year Hold that on. they're favored, the Lakers are favored to win it all. I'm and by the way, can you tell me about some of those teams, some of those players that were on those teams? Oh, no, 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 that's true okay. because he had thank Kevin you. Durant, but two of them. First one, <laughs> thank you. First one, he did it. First one, he did it. First one, he did it. First one, first one he did it. First one, he did not. First second, one, he did second not. one, you were there when you saw Adam Silver in the league give them that stimulus package when they were about to get smoked in five, and then they they suspend Draymond after Game Four. You, Andrew Bogut and Eagle Dollar gets hurt in Game Five. They it's shouldn't not have my won that. Draymond game. Green I'm, got suspended. I'm saying, I'm saying it shouldn't You're have. Kicking it somebody? Have. That's on you. I'm, 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 I'm just talking about. We talking ball, right? I'm yes. saying to you, when you look at two teams going at it, I'm saying. Fully loaded. We're not taking injuries and suspensions into consideration. I'm looking at the two fully teams. Loaded, both fully teams. loaded. Both teams. They ain't beating the Warriors. You can That's make a bet what on I'm that. saying. I can make a bet on that. Okay. Well, you See, know because what? You're, you're Lord thinking, willing, you're I'm thinking, not going nowhere. You're thinking Lord willing, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be right here. You're thinking short term, 15 games into the season. No, it's not. Make it 15 games into the season. I'm not, okay? I'm not talking about the 15 games. I'm I know talking what about what I'm, you've seen in the 15 games. No. I'm not saying that because LeBron hasn't played the 10 of them. Of course, I'm not talking about the 15 games. I'm talking about what we know about LeBron, what we know about the other players on the Lakers, and what we know about Steph Curry and the other players on the Warriors over the course of their careers. I don't believe, I don't believe that they're going to beat the Warriors. So what do we know about the other players over the course of their careers? Because that's what you're bringing in these factors, because, right? Because... So I'm LeBron look, doesn't get to finals because no, he does get to finals. No, 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 no. He gets to the finals, okay. but but he's just playing in the same conference as the team that's going to knock him off. That's the only reason. If he was in the Eastern Conference, you'd have a better argument. He ain't getting past Steph Curry. You, am I being specific? Or do you, are you comprehending I'm what I'm what saying? You're saying I'm, I'm not, telling you, you ain't getting past Steph Curry. Like they have zero chance to get I, by the Golden State Warriors. Okay. Yeah. That's when you say I, never, I tell you're what, saying I tell zero you, chance they can ever beat the Golden State Warriors. I tell you how I give them a chance. If somehow, some way, they didn't have to play the Warriors. If they play the Warriors, they're going down. They going down. He did, I think they'll beat anybody throw, else. You, he did throw I, LeBron a bone, though, because yeah. he said that if LeBron does win another title, then he enters the conversation as the GOAT. And I don't think MJ. I'm going to have to worry In about that. In his mind. His mind ain't the only mind that matters. That's true. To LeBron That's James absolutely being the true. Dope, Molly. That's absolutely you true. You know this. I'm, I'm just true. saying. He always said it was the definitive that no it'll stat. always you be MJ even, no matter what. You can't talk to me about Because the greatest winner of all time, 6-0 in the championships, and you want to use all the time that LeBron, Terry Guys, like the era. It's the era you're playing in. Gentlemen, this has been so much fun. Guess what? To be continued. We have a long season to go. You ain't beating Steph Curry. LeBron James. Good stuff, Jay Williams. I like the suit.